Hey RPG fans, now today we will be discussing about arrays and lists. So in this video, we will see what each of these does and how it works. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into the point. So let's start off by creating arrays. Arrays are just lists, so you can have multiple values in just one variable. For example, let's create an array and name it my array. Now here, I am just setting the first value of the array to A. I could just simply set the second value of the array to B. Now to access it, we could simply just say my array and the index you want. For example, you want the A, so let's say 0. And it would be equivalent to the value. Now, just have a look that we start off with a 0. Meaning that in case of arrays, you actually start with 0 rather than 1. So, just remember that. Now, you might notice that we are writing a lot of code over here in order to make an array. Instead, we could, use the, uh, we could have used a shorthand that is writing it like this. This is comparatively way shorter rather than writing a whole lot of code just to make a single array. Now, see, I, if you want a list of the names of protagonists in your game, you could just write the first name, say we have three protagonists, A, B, and C, and write it like this. Now, to access the variable, we could say my array 0. Let's see it in the game by using a debug statement show debug message. This isn't actually useful as a production thing but in case of debugging it is a very useful function. So I could write my array 0. Now let's go to, to the default room and put that object and let's go forward and test it and here you go you just need to go over here and we have got the first value a now you could use it everywhere along with some array function game maker offers like array create which is exactly similar to this one right here but if you want to use it as a function, go forward. And array copy, if you want to make a copy of that array. And array length 1D. This is very, very useful. And it takes just one argument. That's the variable of the array. Now, where you could use it is in a for loop. For example, I have to show three of the a b and c so i'll just make a for loop here we'll set array length 1d of my array and i plus plus now this for loop will run to the length of the array meaning it will execute three times so here what we could do is my array of the index i. In our case, the index i at the first will be 0. So it will print a. Then it will become 1. It will print b and then c and the for loop will end. So let's check it out. Now here it is. A, B, and C. Now, you could use arrays in all sort of things, right? Like, well, 
items? No, we could have used arrays in items, but the problem we would encounter here is that the player would not have all the same items at all times. Yes, you could make a data of items and give players specific items, but how are you going to store it? For that, we are going to have DS lists. It stands for data structure list, which is a game maker studio specific function. To make a list, we would just have a variable. Let's name it my list is equal to DS list create. This will create a new list named my list. Now a list has got a lot more function compared to an array. You can see how many functions we have here for just DS list. To add something to the list, we would use DS list add and then the ID of the list, that is the list we want to add the value in and we are going to select my list and then the value we want to add, for example, the item name, say item, item A. Now here, it would add it to the list and we can access it just like an array like this. Though this of course is big as well. So we could use it like my list, the logical or sign and then the index. And here you go, you got item A. Now, as I told earlier, we can delete something from the list like ds list delete the id of the list and the position now if we check the length of the list here zero because the only thing we added is now being deleted. Another useful function for the DS list is the DS list shuffle. So for example, you are making a card game and you have to shuffle it something. You don't have to create a custom script, but you can use just a simple function DS list shuffle and then the ID of the list. Now, to show how it is, let's just add two things or maybe even better, three. Let's make a same for loop. Now let's test the game. So I had done a mistake by not including that randomize function. Now as this function does everything randomly, it but Game Maker Studio to save memory generates the same random seed every time. So whenever you want to do something random, proceed it by randomize.
Now, if we run the game, we should have correct results. Now, here we have it. Item C, item B, and item A. Now, there are some other functions as well, like ds list mp and ds list copy just like the array underscore copy but all of them are just having very easy syntax so we will just not include them in this video now another thing you need to be clear about when you are making a data structure that you are deleting the list after you have used it you might think that when I delete an object in game maker all the variables are deleted which currently is true but the point is DS lists work in a different manner you have to manually delete them in the cleanup event so let's open the object and add a cleanup event here we are just gonna write DS list destroy and then the ID that's my list now that's it we have made both the lists now the point is that which one we should use when the array or the data structure as I just earlier gave the example of items for arrays as I just gave the example of items at data structure and some names at arrays there are other options as well like when you are creating a card game a DS list is always promoted as it has a very familiar shuffle function. So there are plenty of cases where arrays can be useful as well. As you have just seen when you just want to create a data structure you have to delete it every time which is very time consuming. So even if you want to make a name list with data structure it's gonna be very very long another thing is when you want to create a 2d array data structures are not actually useless because there is another thing called called ds grid i'll be making a separate tutorial on how to use the ds grid which is just like a 2d array and another data structure that's the ds map they both will be included in another different tutorial so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video